In this lesson, we're looking at recombinant DNA. We are covering this point specifically, and we'll keep covering this bit by bit over the course of this unit. So in order to do a lot of new and wonderful things in the biotechnology world, many or most technologies require DNA to be manipulated. Now, recombinant DNA technology combines DNA from different sources to make a new modified DNA sequence. Essentially, a gene from an organism's genome is copied and transferred into the genome of a different species to create a valuable product to us once it has been expressed. So, for example, um, a valuable product might be insulin, it might be antibodies, or it might be an enzyme like amylase, protease, lipase that are used in industry and food creation and things. So yes, the creation of recombinant DNA is basically a form of genetic engineering that can be used to make GMOs or genetically modified organisms, and they're used for a whole range of different purposes. When we talk about recombinant DNA, we're only talking about a particular target gene being inserted into the genome of another species. It's not a huge chunk uh, in the examples that we're talking about. We're not making Frankenstein's monster here just a gene product. We're essentially turning organisms like bacteria into protein factories so we can harvest what we want from them. There are four steps to making recombinant DNA, and these are fairly consistent regardless of the outcome that we're trying to achieve. We have to isolate the target gene, we insert the gene into the genome of another species, we have to make sure the gene is properly bound into the DNA macromolecule, then we have to make sure it is taken in by the organism and replicated so that the target gene is amplified in uh, you know, huge numbers. We're going to go through each step in detail. Firstly, we'll look at isolation. We need to be able to find and isolate the target gene. And by isolate, we essentially mean we have to find it and cut it out and separate it from the whole genome. Now, obviously, with over 3 billion base pairs in our genome, the task of finding one tiny gene isn't going to be easy. And this is where restriction enzymes come into play. Restriction enzymes occur naturally in bacteria, where their regular day job is to cut up foreign DNA, which may enter the cell. And this comes from bacteriophages, like this one, which are essentially viruses that target bacteria, and they insert their genome for replicating and spreading. Um, because the enzymes cut up and destroy invading DNA, they act like a little immune system, right? So they take that genome and cut it up so it's no longer able to be copied and functional. And we take this skill of theirs and we use it to our advantage. Now, each restriction enzyme targets a unique base pair sequence, usually four to eight base pairs in length, and this is known as the recognition sequence. Now, at this site, the phosphodiester backbone of the DNA, that bond is broken. So it's cutting the DNA into restriction fragments. Sometimes the enzymes uh, will break and the bonds have a nice clean break, and these are known as blunt ends. Um, but they can sometimes also be cut to leave a little bit of overhanging exposed nucleotides because the backbone is cut at different locations. Now, because these nucleotides want to keep pairing up in a complementary way with the other nucleotides um, that come that way, they're known as sticky ends. Now, got to now, you know, we've, we've isolated that target DNA, we've cut it out. Regardless of if it has sticky ends or blunt ends, it has to now be inserted into a new organism. And most commonly, bacterial plasmids are used because um, they have their small little DNA uh, plasmid and they're used as the vector. So the bacterial plasmid has to be cut open at exactly the same or using the exact same restriction enzyme. So that will cut out the exact same sequence and therefore it will pair up really well, particularly if there are sticky ends at that target part of the genome. And the target gene and the plasma are left together in the hope that the new DNA will anneal or stick to the open plasmid. So even though the target gene will pair up to complementary nucleotides on its own with a really weak hydrogen bond, it needs to be kind of sealed in there at the backbone as well. So in the joining step, the enzyme ligase will create a new phosphodiester bond the one that the restriction enzyme broke to solidify the DNA backbone. And we also see this um, enzyme ligase do the same job to sew up Okazaki fragments in DNA replication in any normal functioning cell. So this pairing and sealing of the DNA target gene into the plasmid will work cross species because of the universally consistent nature of the DNA structure. Finally, we have to make sure that the recombinant plasmid is actually introduced to the bacterium in a process known as transformation. And the cell can be put into heat shock, which will open up the pores in the cell membrane so the plasmid will be taken in. Now, some bacteria won't uptake the plasmid, some won't, you know, some will, some won't, doesn't matter. Obviously, you can't just use one bacterium, and but the ones that do intake it 
um, will eventually divide and in turn reproduce with the DNA in it. So eventually the product of the gene, the enzyme, the hormone, the antibody, whatever it is, can be harvested from the bacterium and purified to be used once it's expressed. Now the process of harvesting the gene product is super complex and the bacteria are grown with a recombinant plasmid will also be given an antibiotic resistant gene. So they're grown in antibiotic agar and those bacteria that didn't uptake the plasmid with the antibiotic in it will actually die off. And so it only leaves the bacteria with the recombinant DNA in it, which is pretty clever. The insulin that people uh, with diabetes use is created this way using bacteria or yeast. Insulin used to be harvested from the pancreas of pigs during meat production, but it was pretty messy and it was inefficient. Uh, so making recombinant DNA is by far a superior process. Recombinant DNA uh, technology is also used to make the enzyme chymosin, which is used to set cheese uh, rather than getting it from the stomachs of cows. Uh, growth hormones, clotting factors, which are proteins for people with haemophilia who don't make them naturally and antigens from viruses. So virus capsule antigens, um, they use them to make vaccines. So our job is there to describe the process of making recombinant DNA and remembering all of those steps is quite important.